Well, I think, uh, first of all, you know, we have to always see what is the market, right? Because you're trying to solve a problem. So you have to make sure that that's a problem. And then now you figure out, okay, do I have a solution? Can I come up with a solution? But more than anything, and, uh, you know, I've learned this through experience, you have to see, you know, what do the customers want? Because who's going to buy this product at the end of the day? The customers, right? And so you have to understand what do they need? If you're going to make something that they don't require, that doesn't make sense. So I would say first, first thing is to speak with customers to find out what are their requirements, what do they need? If we make this, what will you do? If we make that, what do you think? Hey everyone, this is Devin Miller here with another episode of The Inventive Expert. I'm your host, Devin Miller, the serial entrepreneur that's grown several startups in the seven and eight figure businesses, as well as the founder and CEO of Miller IP Law, where he helps startups and small businesses with their patents and trademarks. If you ever need help with yours, just go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat. Now, today we have a, another great uh, guest on the on the podcast, Mariam Ispa, or Ispahani, as, as close as I'm going to get to getting it right. Very good. Um, <laughs> but Mariam is uh, is a scientist. She's working on a, a product that's uh, hopefully going to help to have an impact on the world for the good and to um, help to um, or, or re- deal with the problems of plastics. And today we're going to talk a lot on the as far as areas of expertise with with regards to one, how do you make an, an impact and how do you develop a product? How do you convince people your product will make an impact and it's worth investing in? But also too, is how do you work with scientists and how do you work with a scientific product? And how do you come your, you know, earn your unofficial master's or PhD in a, in a field that you may not be familiar with at the get-go, but have to have a good enough understanding in order to run things. So it'll be a great discussion and uh, definitely excited to, uh, to, to go through and, uh, and and chat about it. So with that much as introduction, welcome on the podcast, Miriam. Thank you very much, Devin. Always nice to meet you and enjoy your sessions. And I've heard several of your other post- podcasts. And so it's always uh, an exciting guest. Well, I'm, I'm excited to have you on. And we had you on the Inventive Journey, which is a, another uh, a fun episode. So people can always go check out that podcast and that episode. But uh, for today, for those of you that maybe haven't, or those listeners that haven't been uh, introduced or haven't uh, you know become, become familiar with it yet, um, give them maybe just kind of a one to two minute uh, quick background on yourself, a little bit about what you're doing and what you're working on and uh, why, uh, why you become an expert on this uh, area. Sure. Uh, well, I've been in startups pretty much besides working for two uh, nonprofits. So I'm a total entrepreneur person. I enjoy that. I love the energy, the passion, uh, trying to find something that you believe in. It's a lot of hard work. And uh, I decided that like uh, after I tried a few different things that I wanted to be in the renewable space. So I've been in the renewable space for just over 10 years now. I started out with the solar energy uh, startup. And then after that, dabbled a bit in wind and hybrid systems. And now for the past just over two years have been focused on the plastic pollution problem. And so this comes under climate tech, which is also still under renewables, clean tech, climate tech. They all kind of under one umbrella. And uh, this is our focus right now to see what we can do to solve the plastic pollution problem with plant-based or bio-based products. Hmm. Now, one and, and now, no, that was a great introduction. Definitely uh, helpful. And thank you. Now, one now just kind of diving into the bed of the area of expertise and kind of follows right along with that. So. You know, it's, it's definitely when you're getting into the plastics, you're getting into, you know, it's certainly a, a scientific problem and also a product that you're looking to, to bring out. So as you were getting into this originally, you know, were you an expert already on it? Was it something you already knew a lot about and it was just kind of natural iteration or just something where you had to learn a lot and come up to speed and kind of how do people or you know, if they're wanting to get into those type of products, how do you how do you go about tackling it? Yeah, well, having been in the renewable space, I already had a little bit of a know-how, as in what's going on, where are we at, Pl- plastic, you know, is polluting the oceans, the land, it's impacting us. Uh, but uh, yeah, of course, I wasn't technical. I do not have a scientific background. I have worked in semiconductors for seven years, but that's completely different. And I, I had to learn really fast 
because I built a team and my team of scientists who are on this with me, they have, you know, PhD degrees in polymers and uh, biocomposites, etc. So, you know, they are the guys who know all the, the chemistry behind things. And in order for me to understand them and to work with them and for us to work together and see how are we going to build this company and what are we going to do to put this uh, uh, these products out there in the market, uh, I had to be technical to an extent. And so uh, especially one of the scientists on our team has been extremely helpful in uh, educating me and uh, pointing me in, uh, in directions where I could find links to read up and learn. But also, you know, over time, once, once you start working with, uh, with the team and once you start uh, not just that, but working with the customers and seeing what are the customer requirements, what do they need, how do they need it, uh, you also start collecting information and suddenly you become a, let's just say, semi-expert, uh, no. for lack of a better term, in the space. Now, one question that would uh, kind of come up that I'm sure that, because that, that I think that feeling and that need is going to be coming up in a lot of different areas. In other words, let's say you wanted to make, you know, as you did a, a scientific product, something that was, you know, going to affect the, the earth for a positive, and you weren't an expert or you weren't a scientist, then you're going to have to come up to speed. Same thing if you're wanting to go into software development or have an app or a software application made and you're not a programmer or, you know, you want to go start a restaurant and you have no idea how to do a restaurant. And, you know, almost every area, unless you have a, a very uh, steep background or done this before, you're going to have to become an expert in those areas that you're wanting to tackle on or take on as a new project. So as you were kind of figuring that out, you know, how did you go about kind of becoming, you know, I'd say at least a pseudo expert or enough of an expert that you can understand what's going on. You can make sure that it's really get being done right and that things are moving along because, you know, the fear is, is that you go and hire, whether it's a scientist or the software program or whoever might be a good person and, you know, good, well experienced. And then you don't know if they're doing a good job. You don't know if you're paying them, you know, what they should, you don't or have that understanding. So how did you go about kind of tackling becoming an expert in that area so that you could get comfortable with those that you're working for and hiring and that the project was being done right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, being in a startup and being a founder, being a CEO, whatever have you, has all its challenges. So you're dealing with that. So you're dealing with setting it up, you're dealing with uh, operations people, sales people, marketing, customers, etc. But if you do not understand the basics of what it is that you're making, it becomes, you know, even more challenging. And then I didn't want to stand in front of customers and not know what I'm talking about. And also when we're looking for customers, right, I have to know what kind of customers are we looking for? Who's going to use this product? And what I did, actually, interestingly, I went to a used bookstore here in California, and uh, I went to the science section, and they had a whole bunch of chemistry textbooks. And I just spent hours reading, and then I finally bought three books, uh, chemistry textbooks, different kinds, very high level, but at the same time, it had a lot of chemistry 101. And interestingly, these textbooks, because they're newer than, you know, when I went back, you know, to college and studied chemistry, physics, biology, etc. Uh, these textbooks had entire chapters on carbon and on plastic and also environment and plastic pollution. And so I said, oh, this is great. And I read and I read and, you know, it gave me a better understanding. But besides that, also, I joined some organizations so that I could learn more. I attended a lot of webinars. And, you know, we were going through this whole COVID time in the past uh, over a year and a half. And so what was there to do but to sit at home? And I watched lots of uh, webinars, uh, participated, asked questions. In fact, even, you know, was a speaker. And I felt like networking with people. And then I got on LinkedIn and I connected with like hundreds of people, anyone who wrote anything about plastic, plastic pollution, climate, the situation that we're in, as well as the kind of products that would uh, be an alternative to this uh, situation that we're in to replace petroleum-based plastic, I connected with, learned more from, found out about their projects, 
and I interviewed uh, a few dozen scientists. And uh, yeah, we have uh, a few on our team right now, but I interviewed dozens. We have several people who, in fact, you know, want to join us. And uh, just yesterday, I got another message and a call about it. So, you know, now we are on track to uh, better understand what it is that our customers need and the planet needs. Oh, cool. So no, so if I were to kind of maybe summarize that just a bit is one, you, you know, you went out and as many avenues you could find information. You said, hey, I'm at least going to get a, a reasonable or a higher level of understanding on the science, read some of the papers, connect, you know, do some research on the people that know more than I do on this topic, become familiar with them, follow them, and otherwise gain that knowledge. And it's really just a matter of, you know, studying out the, or, be, or putting in the hours and the time and effort to study and, you know, you may not go get the official PhD, but you should you get that familiarity just where you can say, hey, this, you know, this makes sense. Or, you know, if not, then you at least have the foundation for now the scientists can explain it to you and you can get a, you can understand what they're explaining to you, at least on a higher level. So, hey, that definitely makes sense. So now shifting gears just a little bit. So, you know, you come up, you say, okay going to go and get some of that knowledge, going to figure out, you know, what the science is, going to read the books, read the papers, going to get a better understanding, get connected with those and maybe bring some people on board. You know, one of the other things that we talked with a, a bit was um, convincing people that you can make an impact or that your product will make an impact and why it's worthwhile to invest in that. Because a lot of times when you get into those impactful products or certain, you know, products and whatnot, it can make an impact that's worthwhile to invest in. But one, there's either been a lot of failed projects and or they're more expensive than the less you know environmentally friendly impact or full yeah. product so you know how do you go about convincing people to work on or, or invest in your in or your your product as it or to make an impact uh, one thing is interesting we are getting a lot of requests reason being more and more you see in the news people talking about the climate so in a way that in a way uh i suppose we don't even need to do that much marketing of course we we are doing marketing we're very active on social media media we have a huge following on you know all our accounts and all that but uh, more than anything uh people are coming to us and they are saying hey so you here saw this post read on the website did a google search because the need is you know so clear right now whether the ipcc you know of the united nations released that report saying we are in a uh, drastic situation we need to do something about the climate or whether you know it was the cop 26 event that took place recently people are basically waking up and this has been going on for decades but you know let's just say now I think more, more so the younger people are waking up and saying, hey, this has got to stop. We have to do something. So now, but, so let's say now they make that realization. So are they ready just knocking down your door, willing to give you money and invest in your product and do whatever they need to? Or is there still any kind of convincing that needs to go on? In other words, there's a lot of ways that you can tackle different climate issues. Some of them, it feels like have been, you know, bait and switch to where people make a lot of promises and never deliver. And so it's been kind of a hit or miss kind of an industry. So people realize the need. And is there, is there any gap that you have to overcome in convincing them that you're feeling that need? Yeah. Well, we've got different things going on over here. One is on one side, we have customers and we have letters of intent. We have letters of intent from companies from Europe to the U.S. to Canada and uh, South Asia. So we have distributors who have signed up all the way from South Africa to India, et cetera. So on one side, we have those uh, uh, parties who want to partner with us, who want to buy from us and sell for us. And on the other side, we have the uh, potential investors. So we have a lead investor right now, and we are waiting for a co-investor to sign on the dotted line. And then we should be good to go. We're hoping to wrap things up this uh, December, which is already here. And we'd like to do this by, uh, you know, bef before 2022 hits. So on the investor side of things, we have not, to be honest, have not spoken with a lot of investors. Uh, but the few that we did connect with, they believed in what we're doing. 
uh, we spoke with one angel network and, you know, they were not ready for us and they had some other uh, questions, but that's okay. That's a different thing. And now we are talking to others who totally see uh, the value in this and they share our mission the mission, the vision, you know, that we need to do something. So basically what we're doing is we are making products and these products are an alternative to petroleum-based plastic. These products can be used in injection molding machines, 3D printers, in the packaging industry, in the automotive, pharmaceutical and cosmetic industry. So we have different products that go in different spaces. And right now we are very focused on customers and the fact that we have these large letters of intent uh, in the millions and millions of dollars that they require this, this product from us is extremely exciting. So the investors see that, they understand that, and they have been excited about that too, that there is huge potential here. No, and I think that that makes sense. And so in other words, you picked a, and it, one that is a problem that people readily recognize It's one that others are already working to solve. And then you're providing, you know, a, a good solution that's well explained and you're providing that information to people such that they understand that it, it can be impactful and how it will be impactful and how it works. And then it makes it a much easier ability to convince them that, uh, that uh, you're, you're providing that solution that the people need. So now one last year, one kind of, circling back and one of the other things we talked about was a little bit on and you'd hit on it was you know communicating a technical issue to customers and so you know seems like a lot of times for different businesses and a lot you know depending on the technical issue there's kind of one you know one of three options that you can do and I, I have my preference on which option probably makes the most sense but if you're having to explain technical issues to a customer you can have one of your scientists or one of the other people on your team to explain it you can try and pretend like you make it up or otherwise pretend like you understand it and give them very high level answers. And then you get stuck as soon as they ask you a question or you can you know, come up to speed, learn it well enough yourself and be able to explain it. But it also takes time and effort to come up to speed. So as, you were, as you've been looking to communicate with customers on the technical issues, kind of what approaches have you taken and uh, what, is, is what, what would you recommend? Yeah. Well, I'm a very straightforward person and I don't like to talk about things I don't know anything about. I don't like to look like, you know, oh, I know things when I don't. And so I'm very clear. If I don't know it, I say I don't know it. And if I know it or if I could find out where the information is, then I say, you know, I will check on that and get back to you. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, I'm happy to have a scientist on the call with us. Uh, you know, we have uh, four key scientists on our team. And we have like about four or five others who are like ready to jump on a call anytime as consultants, as advisors. So yeah, I could have scientists on the call, have scientists on the email thread, uh, CC'd, and therefore we can address the issue. Uh, if there's something that I can tackle and many of the customers, uh, depending on what their requirements are, some of them very basic, some of them, they start to get a little technical. Technical because, uh, for example, one of our products, uh, they're in pellet form. These pellets have to fit in their 3D printers, have to fit in their injection molding machines. And so they have to make sure that it's not going to mess up their system. What are the specifications? How is it going to behave? What are the me mechanical properties, etc.? So for all these things, my scientists have created data sheets. So we have the data sheets, we have the specifications. Uh, one of the scientists on our team just for one of the products gave me like a 50 page report. It had images in it, it had technical data in it, every single thing you know that she worked on and what she did and how she did. And it was just fantastic. You know, just that for me was a, a, an a awakening experience to learn. So, yeah, I mean, even when I was in the semiconductor industry, when I first started out, I used to spend a lot of time in the lab with the scientists, with the engineers and working with them, seeing what they're doing, how they're doing it, seeing how things are processed. And I used to learn. And when I attended meetings as a salesperson, always it would be myself and then like a master's degree level or a PhD level uh, engineer in the meeting to answer any technical questions. But slowly over time, as I understood things better, uh, most often I did not need the engineer with me 
at those meetings when I met with CEOs of startups and COOs, CTOs mostly. Mm. No, and, I, and, I, and if I were to kind of parse that, because I think there's a lot of, of good advice in there, a lot of good the, or guidance is one is you should put in the work to understand it as best as you can or as, as reasonably as you can from the get go. In other words, you should, you know, as the owner of the business or the person that's running it or, you know, the founder, one, you need to be able to understand it so you make sure you're running it well, but also two is so you can talk intelligently yeah. with other people. Now, you're not going to be an expert. You're not going to become an expert on all or to the same level, maybe as all the scientists and all the people you hired. That's why you're hiring them. But you can, one is you can or work with them, ask them questions, understand it, come up to speed. Two, if you get asked a question that you don't know when you're in a meeting, say, hey, I don't know, but we have these people that I'm sure will know. Let me circle back with you and get you that answer. But three is also, I think, is uh, come prepared with data sheets, with information so that they have a lot to take away. So even if you don't have all the answers, which you get in enough meetings, you'll get a feel for a lot of the answers, but every so often you'll get caught off guard or you'll have something that you hadn't thought of or had, don't have the answer right offhand that then you yeah. can say, but here's all the other information. Here's some things to get started to review over as we get that, um, as we get that additional information for you. And it gives people a lot higher degree of confidence. So I think that there's a lot of great takeaways in there. Well, as we start to wrap up the episode, and there's a lot more things I'm sure we can hit on, but as we uh, start to wrap up, you know, we've talked a lot about, you know, everything from, you know, how to make an impact, how to identify what you're going to make an impact with, how to work with scientific products, how to work with scientists, how to become a, you know, a pseudo PhD or to earn your, you know, unofficial PhD, how to, you know, convince people that your product will or raise a solution. We've also talked about, you know, how you're going to present it to people and ask or answer customer questions or, or potential investor questions. With all of that, there's a lot of things that people could start on, a lot of things that they could get going on today, especially if they want to get working on an impactful or scientific product. Now, with all of that, you know, can't get going on everything today, can't get started on everything all at once. So if you were to say, you know, one thing that if people that are interested or wanting to get going in a product, you know, in this field, what would be that one thing that they should take away or one thing they should get started with? Okay. Well, I think, uh, first of all, you know, we have to always see what is the market right? Because you're trying to solve a problem. So you have to make sure that that's a problem. And then now you figure out, okay, do I have a solution? Can I come up with a solution? But more than anything, and, uh, you know, I've learned this through experience, you have to see, you know, what do the customers want? Because who's going to buy this product at the end of the day? The customers, right? And so you have to understand what do they need? If you're going to make something that they don't require, that doesn't make sense. So I would say first, first thing is to speak with customers to find out what are their requirements, what do they need. If we make this, what will you do? If we make that, what do you think? And in our particular case, we've made a lot of prototypes. And in fact, now we have customer orders in uh, several pounds of this and several pounds, uh, you know, of that and uh, uh, units of this and that for them so that they can test these so that they can evaluate them. And then we get the big orders. So that's that's the way we tackled it. But it is uh, depending on the product, there can sometimes be a lot of back and forth. Uh, between us and the customers. So that's why it was very important to find out what they want so that we can then uh, adjust ourselves and adapt accordingly. No, I think that uh, definitely uh, makes a lot of sense. I think that that's, you know, almost a universal uh, good takeaway is, is better, especially in this industry is go talk with the customer, see if you're actually solving the problem that they want to have solved or they're willing to pay for, that will make an impact that you'll actually be able to make progress. And too often you say, hey, I have a great yeah. solution. I just want to make a, go solve this problem. And I think I'm going to do it without ever talking with the customers. And then you kind of come to find out you make a disconnect or people aren't going to invest in it. They're not going to pay for it. And even while you think it's a great solution, it's never going to see the light of day. So I think that starting at that point is a, definitely a great takeaway. Well, if people want to reach out, they want to be a customer, they want to be a client, they want to be an employee, they want to be an investor, they want to be your next best friend, any or all of the above, what's the best way to reach out to you, contact you, find out more? Yeah, definitely. We have a website, shonalibioplastics.com, and it's uh, you can send an email through there. You can find us on LinkedIn. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. Uh, you can find me 
I am very approachable. I always like to network, always open to new connections and seeing how we can help each other. And even if, you know, A can't help B, well, B knows C, knows D, and that, that's how networking works. Uh, so I'm on LinkedIn also, uh, so I could be approached that way. We are definitely going to be hiring. In fact, we need to start talking about what we're going to do because based on our uh, financial plan, we need close to 200 people uh, to get this uh, manufacturing off the ground. And so I think we're going to start talking about that uh, pretty soon. Let, let Christmas get over. Let's get into 2022. And after we all have a nice little uh, vacation, uh, then we will get to that. But always approachable. Uh, any time. Well, awesome. Well, I definitely encourage uh, people to connect any or all of the above or any or all of the above ways, and uh, certainly worthwhile to to make those connections and to network and to um, utilize the expertise. So, well, thank you again, uh, Miriam, for coming on the podcast. It's been a fun. It's been a pleasure. And uh, thank you for the listeners. And just a quick reminder to make sure to subscribe, make sure to share, make sure to leave us a review because we want to make sure everybody else uh, l- or learns from all the experts as well and, and has uh, access to this expertise. Um, it also, if you ever need help with our expertise, which is patents, trademarks, and copyrights, feel free to go to strategymeeting.com, grab some time with us to chat, and we're always here to help. Thank you again, Miriam, for coming on the podcast and wish the next leg of your journey even better than the last. Thank you very much, Devon. Appreciate your support and we'll keep looking forward to your podcast and listening to all your interesting guests. Thank you. Absolutely.